In this episode, let's talk about some of the problems you can run into when recording two or more people with two or more mics. When you're recording sound for film and video projects where you have two or more people and they each have their own microphone, there are a couple of common problems that we can run into, and there are some things we can do to prevent those. We're going to do this in two parts. In this episode, we're going to talk about these two main problems, some of the things you can do in terms of mic placement to prevent those problems. And then in the follow-up, we'll talk a little bit more about mixing, which is another thing you can do to help prevent some of these issues. The first issue is mic bleed. And that is a case where one person is talking into their mic, but their voice is also picked up on the mic of the other person. And that can actually start to sound kind of strange and it can make it difficult to edit. We're gonna talk about some things you can do to prevent that issue. The second is phase problems. Now, if you're not familiar with what phase problems are, um, typically it has to do with how close the two microphones are to each other, and it can cause destructive and constructive interference, and it can actually change the sound of the voice. So let's give you a quick demonstration, first of all, of what phase issues sound like. So I'm gonna use a couple of different mics here, my mic plus another one, and I'm gonna take the other mic and move it in and out as I'm making a noise, and you'll be able to hear some changes. Shh. Did you hear the different sounds? It kind of the, dis I don't know if it's really distortion, but you could hear how the actual sound, the, the, the timbre of the sound changed as I moved that microphone back and forth. And that's an issue you can also run into with dialogue, depending on where you place your microphone. So what can you do? The two main things we're gonna talk about today are first of all, using the three to one rule, which is talking about how far the mic should be from each other. And the second thing is going to be talking about placing the mic in terms of its orientation so that you use the rejection features of your microphone to help prevent bleed. So first of all, the distance. The distance is mainly actually helps solve both of the problems we talked about, both phase and uh, potential bleed. Now it's not necessarily going to completely solve the bleed issue, but it will certainly help. And that is to use a three to one rule. Three to one rule is first of all, with the first person, you take the distance from their microphone to their mouth. So for example, in this case here, I'm looking at about probably, I would say 20 centimeters, um, not very good at this conversion, probably six or seven inches from the mic right now. What that means is that I wanna place the other mic at least three times this distance from this mic. So for example, let's say that we are 20 centimeters away. We, that means we wanna get the other mic at least 60 centimeters away from this mic. And you notice when we did that phase demonstration, that as I move the microphone farther away, that we got less of the phase issue. So that solves, that helps us solve the phase issue. And also it helps to solve the bleed issue because the farther away you get the other microphone from this sound source, the less this other mic is gonna pick up me <laughs> when I talk. So you're gonna get less bleed. Now, most boom microphones have a polar pattern. By the way, the things that I'm talking about here apply not only to dynamic mics like what I happen to be using here right now, but also to boom mics, also to shotgun microphones. In the case of shotgun microphones and boom microphones and even dynamic microphones, they have a polar pattern where certain parts, uh, certain places around the mic are not picked up as well as in front of the mic. So for example, on a dynamic microphone like this, we have a cardioid pickup pattern. That means it picks up the sound around this part of the mic, but rejects most of the sound back here at the back of the mic. So we can use that to our advantage. And what that means is if we position our two mics, say for example, we're recording two people with two different mics. If I place the back of this mic towards the other person, that's going to help to reject some of the noise from the other person. So we'll get less bleed into this microphone. So that's one thing you can do. It's not always practical, but it's something to keep in mind. Even if you turn the microphone off a little bit, that can help some. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're positioning your microphones. Now, if you're not sure, what the pickup pattern or the polar pattern is on your microphone, you can use your ears to help determine the best place to place the mic. So pop your headphones on while you've got your mics hooked up to your recorder or mixer and have a person sitting where you're going to have the talent, have them talking and then turn the other mic until you find the spot where it rejects this, the sound, <laughs> the dialogue from the person that you're trying to reject from. So lavaliers are kind of a special case because most lavaliers are omnidirectional, but in the case of boom mics and dynamic mics and shotgun mics, 
all of these same things apply. So a three to one rule, you can use them with all those types of mics. The only unique thing is lavaliers. That's a, just a tip that you can use to help you reduce two things, number one, bleed, and number two, phase. I hope those things were helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. Be sure to subscribe so that you can get our next episode where we're going to talk about some other things you can do with mixing to help prevent bleed. Mm -hmm.